Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Hey, brother. We're going over right now who God's enemies are real quick, real quick. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 28, verse 68 real quick. Do you know who you are according to the Bible, brother? Look at that sign right there. There's a list of, of nations, right, that are really not nations. According to God, they are tribes within one nation. We are all one people. The Israelites, according to the Bible, do you see your name on the uh, right side of any of those categories there? There's uh, Mexicans, there's blacks, there's Puerto Ricans, there's the blacks of uh, Haiti and Jamaica. There's people from South America. American black was your dad a so-called African American? Okay, so uh, we're descent. We're teaching our people their true nationality according to the Bible. Your true nationality, your identity, identity has to be brought back to your remembrance. Days. That's a requirement. This is not religion. These are the laws of God. Right. Something that they're not teaching in the churches. They'll never tell you this. Give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Look at Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So what's your name, brother? Romeo. Okay, Romeo. You're saying you're a so-called black man. This is Moses speaking to the children of Israel. The people listed on that sign right there when we came out of Egypt with Moses. He was saying, now I'm going to I'm gonna tell you something. There's a whole bunch of commandments we got to keep, and if you don't keep them, all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Give me verse 68 real quick. Verse 68. This is one of the curses in that category. And the Lord shall bring thee unto Egypt again with ships. So he's telling Israel as a nation would be brought back to Egypt again. Give me Egypt. We're going to show you that the Bible is a similitude. You have to go precept on precept. It's like a puzzle you have to solve, right? You can't read it like a novel. You can't read it cover to cover and get, get the full understanding, right? So now we're going to go back in the Bible to show you what Egypt actually means. Read. There's a book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So he's saying I brought you out of Egypt, and now he's going to describe, because there's a comma right after the word Egypt. Read. Out of the house of bondage. So Egypt is synonymous. Go back to Deuteronomy. Egypt means house of bondage. Bondage is also another word for what? When you're bound up and you're constrained, what is that? Restricted from doing what? What's right? We read the first scripture before you got here. It says, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So you're restricted from what? Your freedom. And the, you're right. The truth also. This is what we're bringing out right now. Read this. It's the book of Deuteronomy, to the 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee unto Egypt. So Egypt. Egypt was what? House of bondage? Constraint? What's another word? Captivity. Slavery. Right? That's what we, the more words that we can identify with, right? Read. And the Lord shall bring thee unto Egypt again with ships. So he's going to bring us into Egypt again. Now, when we came out of Moses with Egypt, we never went back to Egypt as a people. So that's what I'm telling you. This word Egypt is synonymous with something else. He's letting us know we are going to be brought back into captivity again by a very specific mode of transportation, ships. So all the other nations on the earth might say, yeah, we were slaves, but not everybody went into slavery on slave ships. That only pertains to the people on that sign right there. Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. So there was a very specific way that the Most High let Moses see the future, and Moses was able to interpret it to us as a people when we were in the wilderness with him. Read. Thou shalt see no more again. So the it he's 
referring to is our homeland. We were not going to see our homeland again as a people. A few of us might go back to our homeland, you know, certain parts of Africa or Israel where we, where we think we can identify with our past, but as a nation of people, we are not settled there right now. Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. So there, in that land, go back a little bit. Back up in the verse. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see no more again. And there, captivity, in that land, in that land of Egypt, go ahead. Ye shall be sold unto your enemies. So when you get to your new captivity, you're going to be sold unto your enemies, right? Did it, it didn't say friends, right? Or that we're equal with anybody. It calls them enemies, right? For bond men and bond women. So we would be sold as slave men and slave women, right? So when they say buy you, that's an old Quaker work that means to redeem. So although different people came up, like Martin Luther King Jr., Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, they started movements to redeem the, us as a people, but it never panned out because we weren't understanding and coming together under the laws of God. Give me Amos 3 and 3, 3 and 1. So we're showing you, according to Bible prophecy, who we are as a people. No longer should should you be uh, answering the question of your nationality as African American. You should understand that you're an Israelite, you're from the tribe of Judah, and that now there's something else you need to learn. Read. There's a book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 1. Bring it out. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. So the Lord is speaking to the children of Israel, just like he did through Moses, through all prophets in the Bible. This is Amos right here. He always spoke to the children of Israel. Read. Against the whole family which I have brought up from the land of Egypt, saying So the people that are on these tribes right here, you have you have African Americans, you got Puerto Ricans, you have Mexicans, you have Native American Indians. We are all one family according to the Most High God. There's been a separation. People have separated us through language, through religion, through voting privileges, right? So-called privileges, right? Re and, and religion's a big one. Religion and our education system are two big things, how they separated us, right? But the bottom line, the bottom category that all these things have in common that they put against us is the word sin. Whenever we go against God's laws, we're in sin. Continue. Verse 2. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. So the people on that side, us, is the only people he has known of all the families of the earth. He created everybody, but he only knows us. That's what he's telling us. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So iniquities is another word for sin. Therefore, since I'm your daddy, I'm going to punish you. I'm not worried about those bastards. They're not my children. That is what he's saying in the spirit. Okay? Um, Brother Romeo, right? Romeo? I know you gotta get ready to go. Do you have any questions? Uh, I'm just gonna uh, just remind the, uh, we call ourselves, uh, let me tell you his name. Uh, uh, let me tell you uh, ben Israel. Somebody, Ben Israel? Yeah. Okay. There, there's a lot of brothers here that call themselves Ben Israel. It means son Elijah. of. Okay. Yeah, it means Ben Israel means son of Israel. It means that in these last days, we're going to take on our, our rightful names. We're going to start calling ourselves by the name Israel. When people at my job uh, say, hey, aren't you Mexican? I just smile at them, right? Sometimes I got to use wisdom, but if we get into a conversation where it's one of my own, I'm going to let them know who I am and also who they are, okay? got one more on your way out because there's a requirement it's not just knowing right now we're, we're required to do something read this is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12 and now Israel so now Romeo and you're not going to leave here and, and call yourself African American you're from the tribe of Judah that's right you're an Israelite man all right read and now Israel what does the Lord thy God require of thee but what else does he require of you besides just knowing read but to fear so we have to learn what his judgments are for the wickedness we've been in. To walk in all his ways. Start learning the ways of God and walking in them by, so you can lead by example. Read. And to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. So the men of Israel, the people on that side, 
are the only ones that have a right to serve God. We are the only ones that have a right, according to God, to love Him in the way that He told us to love Him. Let's find out what that love is. Read. Verse 13. To keep the commandments of the Lord and His statutes. So, what it's going into when it says to love and serve Him, walk in all His ways, fear Him, and do it with all your heart and all your soul. All those things boil down to the commandments and the statutes. Read 13 again. To keep the commandments of the Lord and His statutes, which I command thee this day for, thy, for the good. So it's for our good that not only do we know who we are, but we start keeping the commandments and the laws and the statutes which He has commanded us. This is repetitive throughout the Bible, but we're so knuckleheaded that we're going to put it off. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.